I want to talk, um, I can't get away from the subject, I cannot get away from the subject of faith. I know it seems like I've talked about it every other time I preach, I'm talking about faith, but I can't move from it, and I can't move from Luke 18.8, which if you, in the NIV or NASB, uh, NASV, New Version, Version, yeah, um, says, when the Son of Man returns, or when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? I want to be found with faith. And I love how it reads in the Passion Translation. God will give swift... I'm just... I'm already in the sermon now, guys. I'm in it. I'm in it now. God will give swift justice to those who don't give up. God will give swift justice to don't... Don't give up. You've been praying for this thing. You've been standing. You've been believing on the promises of God. You might be real close to that thing happening. Don't give up because the Bible says he will give swift justice in that area for you. You've been praying for prodigals to come home. Keep praying. You know, the justice of God is a lot different than the justice of man. Yet when the Son of Man comes back, Will he find persistent faithfulness in his people? Will he find persistent faithfulness in you? I want to encourage you, challenge you to continue to walk in faith, ever-increasing faith. Smith Wigglesworth used to talk about ever-increasing faith. You remember Smith Wigglesworth, the the great evangelist from England, came to America and couldn't read a lick, was as dumb as a doorbell, according to him. I mean, I don't know that, but that's what he, that's what he said, probably, something. Anyway, he couldn't read a lick. He, he had a menial job, but the Lord gave him the ability to read the Bible. Supernatural. He opened the Bible, he could read it completely and understand it, then he would go pick up a newspaper, had no clue what it said. Isn't that crazy? There's something powerful in these words here. Sometimes we take for granted. I mean, I'll, I've been with you. Sometimes we, we take this thing for granted. We say, well, it's just the Bible. It's just, you know, it's a relationship with God. It's, well, you know how you find out more about God? Right here. And so don't neglect the reading of the word, too. That's for me as well, I'm speaking to myself. So so we want to talk about ever-increasing faith. Um, I got some stories I'm going to talk about real quick. But when we think of faith in the Bible as a a substance, what do we think of? Faith like a what? Mustard seed. You know how big a mustard seed is. It's like a grain of rice. But you know that when you plant that bad boy and you in good soil and you water it and you take action with it and you you know some people speak to their plants i don't know you know like oh, come on little plant you can grow i mean you, you know these people it's crazy <laughs> crazy and uh i think there was like a uh when i was in school there was this um this scientific experiment where there were these two plants or three plants and like somebody would would speak nice to this one plant and then they would like start like cussing and cursing this other plant and they would they would feed it the same but they would speak to it and the plant that they blessed grew and and was healthy and the plant that they cursed actually died have you seen this study this is what Hmm. wow we have a scholar you knew his name is that his name close Nerd! But anyway, uh, no. Thank you. Megan, you were awesome. Uh, are you coming Wednesday night? Yes. So um, anyway, this is a whole nother message about the power of the tongue. I mean, that's a whole nother message we can go into. So I don't know why. Why did I talk about the plants? I don't know. All right. Mustard seed. Mustard seed. Thank you. So we plant the mustard seed. But do you know that the mustard plant or the mustard tree is, it, it's like as uh, big as this building. I mean, it's enormous. I don't think it's as big as the banyan trees in Hawaii, though. Those are huge monsters. 
I was raised in Hawaii. Banyan trees, you, may, you could sit under that thing and get no sunlight. Those things are huge. But the mustard tree is humongous. I don't know, is, is a mustard, is it a pod? What is, how does the, I mean, when you get the mustard? And does it come with ketchup on the tree? <laughs> Here's the point of this dumb story. Um, that thing has to grow. And even when it is grown, it is producing the mustard seed, or the, the fruit, or whatever, fruit or vegetable, whatever mustard is, steak. It is ever increasing. So it's not enough to have the mustard seed. That's what you start with. You have to let that thing grow. Faith must be active. You must put action to your faith. The Bible is very clear. Faith without works is dead. It's dead. You know, this is a scary one too. It's, the Bible is clear that you can't please God without faith. Think about that one. Now you all have some semblance of faith. You're sitting here. You accepted Christ, so you have some faith by grace. We have been received by Christ into the, into the kingship, into heaven, into the glory of God. We're, we're seated with him in heavenly places. We share the mind of Christ, the same spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. All this is amazing things. But we, we have to operate in a state of action, not passive, not passivity. Passivity? Yeah. Action, not passive. Passive faith is actually active doubt. We cannot be a people where doubt is in our forefront. We cannot have any doubt. Now, it's okay to question God about things. You know, God, what is it? You know, what hap what's happening here? I was questioning God as I lie in bed for two weeks with stinking COVID. Believe me. I was the righteous anger that came up within me. Uh, and I'm like, God, what's going on here? Psalm 91 says, come on now. But guess what it did not do? It did not shake my faith. It did not change who God said he was. It did not change the fact that he is healer and that I can live in divine health. And guess what? I'm here standing in front of you healthy. Why? Because God is who he says he is. Sometimes you need to go through the storm to kind of see how strong your faith is. Lee and I again, Lee, this is the Lee day. We were talking uh, last night about... Um, change versus transformation. In fact, it was such a great word. I want to have Lee preach it in a few weeks. Change versus transformation. Have you been changed or have you been transformed? If you've been transformed, you'll know that when your person that you voted for is not elected, you are not moved. I mean, are our houses planted? Are we planted? Are we, have we been built on the rock or have we been built on the sand? Don't be so fragile to be blown by this wind and that wind and here we go. Oh my goodness, I can't. Oh God, are you with me? He's never not with you. Sometimes he stands out in the midst of a storm and he says, come. Like with Peter. Peter in the boat, the boat is just, it's like, what is happening here? Where is Jesus? Oh my goodness, there he is. I think that's him. Is that him? Yeah, it looks like him. Way out there, Jesus. So Peter goes, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come out into the water. Why? What kind of, how about if that's you, why don't you stop the storm? <clears throat> but he's like, this Peter, man, he's, he's something. How many of you kind of relate to Peter? Man, Peter, wow, how, a lot of Peter, yeah. <laughs> Who's John the Beloved? The one that Jesus loved. Of course, Deanna. Yeah. The one who, oh, Lee, you're both. Yeah, we have a little of both. We have a little bit of all of us. Just no, we don't want Judas. That's the one. We don't want to have any part of Judas in this, but a little bit of Judas, no. The good Judas before he betrayed Christ. Um, and so Peter, right, he's, now, I would need more than just if that's you, tell me, you know, call me. I'd need like, if that's you, I need a prof word of knowledge. I need you to tell me what I had for dinner last night. 
Okay, that's not enough. I need you to tell me my phone number. You know, it's like, that's not enough. No, I need something more than that, right? So Peter takes a step of faith in, on, literally into the storm, into the, on the water. That's much more than some of us have ever done. I mean, really. We, sometimes we go like this. Well, I don't think so. We put a little, a little toe in the water. Oh, that's pretty cold. But Jesus going, well, come on. No, oh, come. Come on. It's fun out here. It's going to be fun to run a church. Come on. <laughs> it's going to be fun to move to Vegas. We just, uh, I was going to say, we just lost Dan and Steph. That's not good. We just sent out Dan and Steph last week. Was it last week? They're going to Austin, Texas. It's because, you know why? Because God said, come on. I got a new experience for you. Come. The water's fine. And so Peter steps up, steps out, and guess what happens? He walks on water. Anybody know anybody that's walked on water ever? Even one step. This guy in Vegas, he's a fraud. What's his name? He does the water. It's, give me a break, Chris Angel. Come on now. Plexiglass, come on. There was no plexiglass. It wasn't even invented yet, Lee. So, so he's walking on the water, and then guess what happens? Just like what happens with us, he starts to get distracted by things that are happening around him. The storm, these waves are pretty big, actually. This water is pretty cold. Is that really Jesus? Because I'm starting to get a little nervous here. Why would you have called me out here? Why, why wouldn't you have just said, stay in the boat? Even when I said, call me, you should have just said, stay in the boat. So, so Peter starts looking around. He goes, man, um, I'm about to lose my house. This doesn't seem right. He says, man, the country looks like it's in turmoil. This doesn't seem right. Cities are burning down. This is not, there's... This can't be right. I, this is not the right thing. I'm, I'm totally distracted by everything. And so then what happens is the Bible says he begins to sink. What happens is his faith begins to wane. Not Wayne Ritchie, my father, but wane. His faith begins to wane. It begins to... Doubt begins to creep up within him. And it happens quickly, doesn't it? And he's looking around, and, the, and I find this very interesting. The Bible says he begins to sink. It doesn't say he plops to the bottom of the ocean, which I would probably do, plop. It says he begins to sink. Why? Because there's still elements of faith wrapped in his doubt that is holding him up. And Jesus always comes through, doesn't he? Jesus doesn't let him sink. He, he's not going to let you sink. The Bible says Jesus comes and takes him by the arm and walks him back into the comfort and safety of the boat. Now, we could look at that and say, Peter, that was a, a failure. I don't see Peter like that as the failure. I see Peter as one who took a grandiose step of faith and just let distractions dictate what he was thinking for a moment. And then Jesus comes in and rescues him like he has rescued all of us one million times. <laughs> Jesus says in Revelations 3.20, I stand at, behold, I stand at the door and knock, right? And I think he's trying in relation with, with Luke 18, 8, will he, when he returns, will he find faith on earth? Will he find you faithful? It's like he's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking and he's saying, can I come in? I want to, I want to see if you have faith. <clears throat> now, he knows we have faith. I mean, this is a play on words, obviously. But you can choose to let him in or not. That's the, that's the thing. Give all of your heart you got to give all of your heart. Every area of your heart that doesn't have Jesus under the lordship of it is a, is a part of your heart that's in deception, that's in doubt, that doesn't operate in love, that operates in fear. We've said this before. Before any part of you that has fear or anxiety 
is a part of your life you have not surrendered to Christ because perfect love casts out all fear. So Jesus stands at the door and knocks. Now this is, this reminds me of growing up. I grew up in Hawaii. How many of you been to Hawaii? Just been to Hawaii. Everybody's been to Hawaii. Las Vegas to Hawaii. Cheap tickets. Here we go. How many raised in Hawaii? We have some Hawaiians here. Yeah, what island? Oahu? What part? Huh? You forgot. Let's just say Kaneohe. No. All right. Anyway, North Shore. You're from Hawaii. You were raised in Hawaii, Connie? What? Where? Kahala. Kahala? Oh, look at you. So Hawaii is kind of its own thing. You know, its own, almost its own little country. I was raised in, uh, on Hilo, in Hilo, actually Curtistown. My dad was a pastor of a church called Curtistown Assembly of God. We were good old AG boys. And we had a little church, little white church. I think there was a steeple for a minute. Didn't it have a steeple? Then you, got, you took it down, right? Yeah, we had a steeple and everything. It was like this church, in the, in, in, uh, and we didn't live on the beach. You think you're from Hawaii, you live on the beach, like you just live in a tent on the beach. No, come on. It's like you just because you live in Vegas doesn't mean you live on the strip. We lived far from the beach, actually, up toward, going up toward the volcano. Ooh, and the volcano, which she would spit some fire. Ugh. And there's, you know, there's a lot of superstition among even Christians in Hawaii about the volcano and the volcano goddess. We heard all these stories, Pele, don't travel, don't travel over, on, uh, over the uh, Mauna Kea on Saddle Road uh, in, at night with pork. And if you see an old lady that's uh, hitchhiking, you have to pick her up because that's probably Pele. And if you don't, she's going to curse you. And these Christians believe this stuff. And I'll tell you this, let me tell you this. Well, this is, no, no, you're laughing at me. Be careful what you believe. Because what you believe oftentimes manifests. And so you want to live a life that is rejecting these superstitions. Because you'll start to see these things. They'll just like appear. You're like, I told you. No, you're stinking. What you focus on, you will see. Focus on Christ. Focus on the Holy Spirit. Focus on God. Focus on the goodness of God, and you will see the goodness of God. So, thank you. So, I grew up as a PK, pastor's kid, and we had this church, and my dad was this, the, you know, assembly got pastor, doing his thing, right? And we had what was called a parsonage on the property. You know what a parsonage is? What is it? Yeah, it's, it's a free house given to the pastor by the church. Usually it helps because if they don't pay you a lot, you get a, a parsonage. Parsonage can look like whatever. You don't get to choose what it looks like. It's here's your parsonage. Running water, good. Hey, check. So we had a parsonage. We had about two and a half acres. So when I grew up, on the, on the two and a half acres, three acres, when I grew up, we didn't have cell phones. D this is how old I am. Some of you guys, I know that I'm not old as half of you, thank God. But we did not have the internet when I was in school. No internet. Can you believe it? Have you heard of such a thing? Uh, no, I remember the first time I got on the internet. It was almost like a fax machine. It was a, it was a, Tandy, one, a Tandy 1000 computer. And it's like, these pic it would like... You'd see this picture of this. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's amazing. It's like the, the technology cannot get any better than this. This is unreal. How could we get any better? Right? Like, how could we get any better than an iPad that, like, like I'll say something and then five, five seconds later it pops up with an ad for what I just said? Get off me! My goodness. Anyway, I digress. You know, it was, it, was the, it was the early 80s, and everybody was friendly back then. It was like, you know, everybody loved each other. And we lived on this island, the big island of Hawaii. But it was a different time. When we didn't have doorbell, but, but we had, you know, somebody would knock on the door. So I was a kid. I'm 10, 11, 12, 13. We hear a knock on the door, and we're like, who's here? 
oh my goodness, this is amazing. We're running to the front door. We're in, if, if it's at night, we're in our pajamas and we're, we're running, we're sliding through the kitchen to get to the glimpse of who's at, who's at the front door. Am I gonna, it's gonna be a friend from church. This is great. My parents would come and, hey, great. I mean, if it wasn't some weirdo that wanted my dad, you know, to counsel him, you know, that would be another story, but usually it was, usually it was uh, of somebody from church and, hey, we just brought you by a pie. I just made a pie of a bananas and mangoes and, 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 and guava pie. Is this your pie? Oh, come on in. No, no, I don't. No, come on in. And then they'd come in, and then we'd, we'd sit down together, and we'd talk, and we actually had a relationship with people. Do you guys remember? This is how, this is how I grew up. This was the 80s. That's right. Now it's a little different. Now it's the doorbell. Bing, bong, ding, dong, bong. Some of those have those long doorbells. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a song. So now the doorbell, I'm just being straight honest with me now. This is how we are. I've changed a little bit. We got jaded a little bit, didn't we? Doorbell rings. I'm probably sitting there. I'm probably worshiping. I'm probably in, in a state of worship and prayer in the living room. Or I'm eating. My kids are probably upstairs in their rooms on their devices. My son, he has the TV on, computer monitor, his laptop, and he's on the phone all at the same time. And I walk in his room, I'm like, what is happening here? What are you doing? Well, I'm watching The Simpsons here. Yeah, I can see that. I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons. I'm watching the symptoms. What, what's on this screen? Well, that's got, um, I'm watching a video of this guy giving a tutorial on marbles. Okay. What's on this screen? Well, this is, um, I'm, I'm typing up some, some sort of new code to, you know, to break the internet or something. And who, who are you on the phone with? Oh, I'm on the phone with Josiah Wexler. Okay, cool. Well, that's okay. That one's okay. But it's like, it's like, my goodness, all the, so don't blame me. Now, some of you are judging me. I, I can feel it now. Well, you're the parent. Why do you allow so many things to go on? You parent your kid. I'll parent my kid. I got good kids. I got good kids. They love God. They stand for righteousness and purity. I got good kids. So I think we're doing all right. And we could always use help from the prophet if you want to give us help. The, tra- the parent prophet. So now what happens is, I don't know. Now what happens is, we're all doing our thing. The doorbell rings, ding dong. And it, it, nobody's running to the door. We're running away. We're going, what? I'm saying, Carly, did you order Amazon? <laughs> no, I didn't order Amazon. Who could that be? Our kids are popping their head over the railing. Who, is, who do you think it is? I'm like, I don't know. Get down, though. Be quiet. <laughs> we don't want I'm trying to watch a show. I'm praying. I'm trying to pray. We don't need this. What is five o'clock in the afternoon? Give me a break. So we're quiet. We hear it again. Ding dong. I'm like, everybody get down. Get down in position. Get away from the window. Can somebody relate? Come on. It's a sad state of today's. I mean, it's a sad state. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit. A little bit. But we've lost some of that thing. Some of that relationship thing. What does this have to do with faith? Nothing. <laughs> but, it, but it reminds me when Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock, how are we responding when he knocks? Are we running to him and throwing the doors of a heart open saying, come, search me and know me, O God? Or are we hiding things from him? You can't go in that bedroom. Jesus, like, where's the faith in this house? Where's the faith in your heart? It's locked away in the closet. I I, I just use it when I need it. And Jesus says, you need to have faith that is ever increasing. You need to have faith that is so strong that when the storm comes, you will not be moved. You need to have faith so strong that you can walk into a situation that looks completely Hopeless, and you can release the faith and hope of heaven. Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is what? Love. You have to have love, but you have to have faith. Faith without works is dead, right? 
but works without love is a clanging symbol. We have to operate out of faith, hope, and love. This is what the world is screaming for today. They don't need a bunch of Christians walking around with their head in the sand, have no clue, have no answer for anything. We have literally access to the creator of the universe. God knows everything. We should have an answer to the world when they ask questions, and the answer is always Jesus. You want truth? His name is Jesus. You want to be awoke? Be awoken to the Holy Spirit. Be awoken or awakened to Jesus, to the Father. This is truth. I love this as well. Lee, you can come on up. Psalm 119, it's verse 89, it's verse 89. remember in the first service I couldn't read, I didn't have my glasses in the first service and I couldn't read the little tiny, I think I said it was verse four, 470, it's verse 89, <laughs> Psalm 119, the title of this little section, you know sometimes the Bible, has, certain versions have little titles, subtitles or whatever. It's, this is called faith in the word of God. And the word of God is not just this, but it's also Jesus is the word, right? Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity. That was a great word, word picture right there. Fashioned to eternity. Fashioned. That means you're there. You're with it. You're fashioned. Like, think about it. Fashion to eternity. I love that. It says, standing firm in the heavens and fashioned to eternity is the word of God. Your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. We, we sang about that this morning. The faithfulness of the God from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. By your decree, everything stands at attention. I love that. By your decree, God, we stand at attention. We're not slouching. We're standing straight chest out knowing who we are and knowing who God is regardless of circumstance for all you have made serves you because your words are my deepest delight I don't give up when all else was lost I don't give up when the doctor says you have this disease, I don't give up. My faith stays strong. When it looks like I can't pay the next bill, I don't give up. I don't go into hiding. Oh, Lord. When my prodigal has not yet returned, I don't give up. I believe God is true to who he says he is. I believe that I will be healed by the power of God. Doesn't mean we deny the doctor's report. Don't be stupid. That's called the spirit of stupid. But what it means is, like this is a Bible verse. This is the Bible. We walk by faith, not by sight. So I can see that doctor's report, or I can see that bad report, or whatever it is, and I don't deny it, but I say there's a greater truth. His name is Jesus. And be smart and take your meds. <laughs> Doctor, sometimes God works through the hands of doctors that don't even know God. Well, I want a doctor that's a Christian. Well, yeah, I do too, but I want a doctor that knows something about medicine. 
to be honest with you, because I'm the Christian in the of the two. I, I'm the I'm the believer. You don't have to be a believer. I just want you to hear, because even the non-believers can hear from heaven. He'll give them wisdom and strategies. Think about it. I mean, you don't think God gave Steve Jobs uh, some wisdom and some creativity about it, about iPhones and about laptops? Come on. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible that even says, I, and I don't know what it is, but I know it's there. I'm really bad with addresses. But it says, it talks about even the righteous of the, of the, of the sinner. Do you remember that verse, Lee? The righteous in the sinner. Okay, here's the deal. Anywhere there's love, there's God. So Because God is love. So even the non-Christian that loves this kid, you say, well, that's not real love. Well, get off your little religious high horse and understand that if, if there's love in his heart, that means there's God somewhere because God is love. You cannot separate God from love. I'm not saying he's received God and that he's a Christian. I'm not saying that's a whole other story. I didn't, I'm not I'm saying that. But what I'm saying is that there's a, everybody was made in the image and likeness of God. There's a little bit of God in everybody.